pull another one. And I find that a lot of the uh, archetypes and situations depicted in the cards are, you know, they kind of plug into our, our collective unconscious. I'm sure it does. And, I'm uh, an amateur tarot you reader, know? so I, I'm, I'm hearing you. Ditto! Yeah, my collection is, is, is getting pretty pretty vast. It's got its own bookcase at this point. Really? <laughs> I only have one set, and the reason why I only have one set is because the cards pick you. You don't pick the cards. Mm, this mm-hmm. is true. And what I got, what I got the old Rider weight set. I can't remember. It's very uh-huh. old I got, and... And uh, it was given to me by a good friend, and, and I, I was going to buy it off him. He says, nope, nope, the cards pick you. You don't pick the cards. And so, mm-hmm. all right. And so <laughs> I kept them, and once in a while, I'll break them out and do readings. But, yeah, that's cool. I, I like that aspect, you know, writing, and you use the uh, the tarot to kind of lead your way in some mm-hmm. aspects. That, that's, that's a very cool uh, factor to that. And it's kind of great when you're doing character profiles because, you know, the tarot has uprights and has reversals. If you're looking for character weaknesses, you can just, you know, think about what the reversal is for the card mm-hmm. or, you know, the uh, the uh, reverse of any given situation, you know, maybe what your character has to learn or, you know, I think it's kind of a great way to, you know, break up writer's block if you're stuck and don't know what, what to where to go next. And Well, what do you do, yeah. though, when you get the tower or the death card? I mean, what do you do? do you, is that at that point? That is awesome. That is awesome. That means I get to set something on fire or blow something yeah, up. I was going to say, the because the tower, <laughs> awesome. you know what I mean? The tower is on firm ground. I mean, that's that's a tower falling. And then, of course, the death mm-hmm. doesn't mean death. It means sometimes it means a new beginning, a death of the old and the new. So, yeah, I mean, that's cool. Hey, it's no mistake that the town in my series is named Temperance. Very uh, true. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like the town. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I, I like the fact that you're incorporating the tarot. And, and in a lot of ways, though, I mean, you know, is it reading you or is it reading the character? It could be doing, yeah. You know, you know I, I am open to it. You know, which which is the tarot tapping into? I mean, that's what people would say. It's tapping into someone's consciousness. But is it yours mm-hmm. or is it your character's? So, yeah, very, very cool. No, but tarot has been a, a, a cool thing. I, I learned how to read. And, of course, like it sounds like you're really good at it. And But it's kind of a learning curve to go with it. The memorization is the hardest part for me. Mm-hmm. Was not having to break out the book and look up the definitions. You, you know, It took a little <laughs> while to get it, but I did get it. But, uh, yeah, so what's your favorite deck? Which, which is your favorite deck of tarot? Who makes the favorite one I for you? The- a lot of people kind of return to the deck that they learned on, and I, I do that. Um, well, I have a lot of decks, and I use them for various purposes, and they're fun, and, you know, some are, you know, I, there's a deck that I consult for when, you know, if I'm gardening or something, and I think, I, I don't know where the heck I want to plant this flower. Let me, you know, pick sure. a, a card, and, oh, oh, it's a wands. Well, let's go plant this, you know, in the south. Yeah. Um but I usually return to the deck that I learned on, which is the Hanson Roberts deck. And I know that, you know, people are like, ah, that deck's for kids. But it really, I think for me, when I was learning, you know, at 16 years old, it was a very kind of benign appearing deck, but had all of the classic Rider mm-hmm. Waite imagery in it. Mm-hmm. So I could learn the symbols. And yeah, I go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you incorporated the tarot, though, actual tarot reading into the story? Are you going to have a tarot reader at some point? I have done that. Okay, I didn't know if you'd done that or not, if you've actually incorporated a reader. and That is super cool. I uh, actually, under a pseudonym, Elena Williams, I wrote a couple of books about a a criminal profiler who uses tarot cards to uh, solve crimes. And uh, that was a lot of fun because I got to include some of the tarot spreads. You know, when the investigator... You know, pulls some cards to try to figure out where the criminal is or what they're thinking, I just pulled those spreads at random and included them in the book here comes the full celtic cross hold on (laughs) yes hold on (laughs) hold on you got a half hour to kill okay here we go there's the full cross there you go here we go yeah 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 yeah. yeah. no that is that is very cool you know what did your family were they supportive like when you were learning tarot or did you kind of hide it from them that you're learning tarot because i had to hide it from mine i was like no i don't want to talk to you about that it's it's just a deck of playing cards uh, were, were, were they uh were they open to it you know i since i was a teenager of course i didn't tell them anything and uh you know that the deck lived under my bed in a shoebox um I generally, you know, keep that that part of my life kind of separate from from family because, 
you know. <laughs> I hear you. I, I I know that feeling. I I know that feeling all too well of separating the two. You know, because yeah, fam- don't you know. mix, don't cross the streams. That's exactly stuff. right. Because never give a family member a tarot <laughs> yeah. reading. Number one, never. Never, if you can avoid never, it. never. Oh gosh, Just don't no, do no. it. Leave it to well. What you should what do, you do is do? Ta- you take them to church and you give the minister a reading. That's how you handle it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, so Eric. I, I don't know if that fly very well. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say he would not appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, Did you actually give a family member a tarot reading? I have, yes. I have. How'd that go? You know, not so good. I mean, you know, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> Thank God they didn't get the death card or the, the tower, but it wasn't what they were hoping to hear. You know, they no. wanted fortune and fame and love and glory, and <laughs> they got a whole lot of fighting and hard work in front of them. And so that was my last time I gave a family member a tarot reading because, of course, I was to blame. Read me again. Oh, but you were accurate. I I was. I was accurate, and they that's what they had in front of them. And then, of course, you know, everybody, this this individual wanted to know whether or not a windfall of money was on their way. And when it was clear it was not, (laughs) you know, and uh, they ended up getting, uh, you know, the the fool card in there as well, which is, you know, sometimes Mm. not the greatest thing in the world. It depends on the context, though. It all depends on the context of the card, where it's where it's placed. But, uh, you know, the, yeah, I learned that really, really quickly. Don't do that. In fact, I haven't read for anybody in quite some time. Although, I do threaten to do that live in air once in a while. Or read people. Oh, that would be fun. You should yeah, do that. Yeah, I, I, I thought about it, and I, I probably will. I'll, ha- I'll, have to, I'll have to start slow, and I'll read Eric one night. There you go. one on Exactly, exactly. But, you know, tell us more about the other books you've written. I know you've written a ton of them. And where, what other cool books you have floating around out there? Well, my first book that I got published was with Pocket Books. It's called Embers, and it's about a woman who is an arson investigator and her fire salamander familiar. He's about five feet long and invisible to everybody else but her. And she also works as a ghost hunter at night. So that was kind of a fun series. Well, that, that's, a, that's a different combination. <laughs> Fire investigator by day, ghost hunter at night. Well, you got to have something to do at night. Well, you, you know? got to have something to do. I mean, have you ever gone on a ghost hunt, by the way? Have you ever actually gone on one? Not on an organized one. No, oh, you'd have a lot of fun. i around on my own. Yeah, but yeah. They, they can be fun. Yeah. yeah, they're not too bad. I don't want to bring anything home, though. I don't want to bring anything home. That's, yeah. that's my, my, my thing. Well, you know, th- that is the danger. All I do is if I do, I threaten to uh, charge them rent, and then they, then they leave. Oh. You know, I just say, okay. if you stick her on, I'm just going to charge your rent. You know, you may you might want to leave. Yeah, you, you know, but that does happen though. That is a real danger. We've had a lot of uh, investigators on the show, and you're absolutely correct. That is a real can be a real danger in a, uh, of being a ghost hunter or paranormal investigator is whenever you put yourself out there to you know that era. I mean that side. It, it very well easily things do and can attach. Especially when you do it long term, because yeah. you know you're, you're kind of having to up the ante, you know, over time, and you know, especially these people who who are very much in the public, whether you know whether they're on TV shows or YouTube or or whatever, um, but they, you know, you can you can see it when you observe them over time or talk to them at different points in their career that they are kind of escalating and escalating because you got to do something. People want more, 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 and then they hit. You know, have some sort of, uh, hopefully not too bad, but I mean, yeah. we've talked to people who've had real crises, who it's led to divorce, it's led to, mm-hmm. you know, possession, and their possession, it's led to oppression, you know, uh, substance abuse, all kinds of problems uh, dep- and depression. And um, and and then you got to really back up and and retreat and figure it out, you know, and and approach things differently. So we it's been very interesting to see some of these people we've been talking to for you know going on ten years now, and to see the path that their careers have taken. Mm-hmm. But inevitably, they end up having some sort of you know experience that they can no longer control that they no yeah. longer can dictate and then you just really have to back off and usually most people from then on are much more cautious about the way they go about it 
Yeah, I know that even just like working in the in the jail, I mean, there was a vis- visualization I would do every morning before I would walk in there, you know, the whole bubble of white light. Yeah. I mean, you just, <laughs> and I can't imagine what you guys do, how, you know, going into some place that you know has something destructive in it. I mean, what do you do? Do you zip up your aura? I mean, how do you keep that <laughs> at bay? What I do is I just, you know, set a very firm boundary for myself. Yeah, I mean, mentally, you know, you will not come with me. You will not follow me. You will not affect me. You know, sometimes it works. Other times it has not worked. I've brought things home and, and I've seen things in my home and, and it just, you know, it works. But then other times it doesn't. A lot of people have a lot of different techniques that work, but it all comes down to one thing equally, in my opinion, is intent, the intent of protection. You know, whether it's sage or a Wheaties box for crying out loud, whatever you want, as long as you, it's the intent involved in protecting yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's what it seems to be to me anyway. I mean, you know, just like people that do home clearings, you know, again, intent, you know, it, it's very much intentional. It's the intent you put behind it. And that you're in charge. That you're yeah. large and you are in charge. Yeah, exactly. That you're the one <laughs> calling the shots and that you do not give permission Yep. For anyone to follow you or uh, to influence yours or others. And, um, you know, it, it may or may not have a religious component. Often it does. But there's there's a number of people who go out there and, and do kind of the same things without it being a religious, uh, mm-hmm. specifically, you know, right as far as they're concerned. But sure. many, many do because, you know, why not, right? It's like it anything works. that helps, yes. Exactly. You're absolutely correct, Eric. I mean, anything that helps, anything you believe in. But, I, I, you know, poking around on your own, though, that can be a dangerous uh, thing as well. I mean, you're actually almost more prone when you're by yourself to run into things. Yeah, I yeah, I have not. Most of the time when I've been poking around on my own, it's been purely by accident that I've run across something, you know? Sure. <laughs> it's not been an intentional, hey, I'm going to go check out this place and see if... It's kind of, you know, the things that you run across just, you know, living day-to-day life. So you're not going to do a paranormal lockdown somewhere is what you're saying. You're not going to do well, that. if somebody were to write me a check, I would probably think about it. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I would have to think about that as well. Hmm, 24 hours. Hmm, hmm $10,000, hmm. you say. Hmm. Is there indoor plumbing in this place? Exactly. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> and does it have Wi-Fi? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good point. <laughs> well, we're, a we, good point. we have 30 seconds left. Why don't you tell the audience where they can find your books and where they can find you and all that good stuff? Well, my latest book is Witch Creek, and a bunch of my other books are also up on my website, which is www.laurabickle.com. That's L-A-U-R-A, B is in blue, I-C-K-L-E.com. And links to my Twitter and uh, Pinterest and Instagram and all that other good stuff are also there. Very, very cool. Laura Bickle, everybody. Check out the books. Great stuff. It's it's available, especially on Amazon. And I like that because I bundle a lot of books together on Amazon and have them all shipped to your house. So check it all out. And again, Laura, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was great fun. Absolutely. Until, until next time, everyone, take care of each other, love each other, and uh, hey, think about that white light. Thank you for listening to this edition of After Hours AM, and please remember to like us on Facebook and also follow us over on Twitter.